Hello everybody, this is a review and release. I am Karik and today we're doing a review for Starbound. Now what is Starbound? Well, it's a 2D mining building crafting game, very similar to Terraria or a 2D kind of Minecraft. You travel from planet to planet. You are trying to save the universe from devastation and in the meantime, you are digging everything up, putting things together, building yourself a little home, getting better weapons, and overall progressing through the world. Now the pros for this game, I find the energy system was very interesting. In Terraria, you had ammunition for guns. Um, in this game, you basically have an energy bar that depletes as you fire or activate special moves. I thought it was a kind of a nice way, even though it does run out fairly quick, you can't really stock up. It is a little bit better than ammunition because when you run out, you can at least just wait and get some back. There are several races you can try. Um, there's some bird people, there's some plant people, there's humans, there's monkeys, there's robots, all sorts of stuff. And they all have their little communities. And I think that was a nice touch when you're exploring. You get to find the little villages and they have some personalities to them. You know what I mean? When you find the robots, they're, they have a neat medieval theme going on all the time, which is interesting. When you find the apes, there's a whole like 1984 theme going on. And that's a neat little addition to the world building. Now there's no shortage of worlds or enemies but they are somewhat randomized. The enemies are not randomized anymore. They're completely set. Uh, they just spawn in certain biomes, I would imagine. But the worlds are randomized, so you get certain kinds of planets, like a volcano, an ocean planet, desert planet, so on and so forth. And on those planets, there's different sizes, but a grassy planet's always easy. A volcano planet's always hard. There are certain patterns like that. The single mining implement was nice. You have your matter manipulator. Uh, it was a little easier to keep track of than, say, a pick in Minecraft or Terraria or something like that. Something that can break. Instead, you have this infinite tool that, while it's not necessarily the greatest to start out with, it can be upgraded and it never runs out. And I thought that was a nice addition. Now, the game makes an attempt at the story, which is always nice. I don't know if it succeeded, uh, which Let's say the good first and get to the bad. The good is that it tried. And there's a different mission for every race to a degree. And, and in the end, it culminates in nice boss battles. But they're always set apart from the world itself. Uh, in Terraria, I gotta compare it to that because that's the closest game, I think, that exists. In Terraria, you're at your home base. Bam, you're being attacked by a giant eyeball or a floating skeleton or something like that. Um, there's a sense of danger because your stuff was at risk. In this game, you're separate from the rest of the world. When you go off to the mines to fight and discover a big fuck off diamond eye thing that shoots lasers, it's not in your home, you're in its home. And while I do like the new environments that they introduce, I feel like it's not as tense because you don't have as much to lose. Now, other cons, there's no ship customization without mods. I feel like they missed a big thing there. I would love to make my own ship. Um, you can download, like I said, lots of mods for this game, change it up, add more stuff, and that's a nice feature. The combat is a little stiff for me. Um, it took a little while to get used to the fact that walking backwards, you can walk backwards slower and shoot backwards like that. Um, almost like a retreat. And I feel like the combat is not very satisfying in that way. When you see an enemy, the best thing to do is just be cautious and blow it up from a distance. You know what I mean? There's no benefit to me to being a melee character because you don't really want to tank damage in this game. It's not really an option. Now, a lot of the missions, not the story missions, but the little, let's call them ambient quests, so we we'll take a page from Skyrim. They seem really repetitive. It's like, hey, help, my friend got lost. Go get her. Bring her back. I've done that quest thousands of times. Hey, there's some bandits over here. Please go kill them. Come back to me. I've done that quest thousands of times. There's no variation. Yes, the character is different. Yes, it's on a different planet, but apparently everybody on every planet has the same damn problems. Now, there is a tendency, this is a big one for me, to lose data. Um, I was playing this with my wife. She actually lost, for some reason, her universe file. It was corrupted, and apparently this is a common issue, according to the internet, where that happens, and it starts a new one, and bam, you lost all your bookmarks, you don't know where your home planet is, none of that shit. And I hope you weren't just storing your stuff there, because now it's gone. It was super annoying. We tried to recover it, and it was not easy. Didn't really work out too well. The final armors of the game, to me, don't feel very worth it. They are interesting, but not good. <laughs> I guess statistically, not good. It's not like 
you're getting really cool fucking armors. Again, go back to Turia. You had a cool beetle armor that wasn't necessarily the final armor, but it looked cool. It was unique. You know, you had a fire armor, wasp armor, um, all sorts of stuff. In this game, it's like, oh yeah, um, some sort of like space suit. Oh yeah, a mechanical suit. They all kind of blend to each other, and they weren't really statistically great enough to for me to choose like, oh yeah, this one or that one. Now, the tenant system could use some improvement. You don't really get a lot of money, and every time you want money from them, you have to talk to them, and that is a pain in the ass. Also, they always want you to do stuff. Also, when a lot of characters are on screen, it lags the fuck out. So, improvements can be definitely made. Now, it seems like to me, uh, it has a lot of stuff this game could do right, but it kind of just ends up being a grind. The quest to get materials, although apparently it is better than it used to be, the quest for materials is always ongoing. You go out, you're digging. Some materials are rare. They only exist in certain planets. You only get a couple at a time. It's not like there's big veins of these materials. And as a result, it can be frustrating. Oh, I need 40 uh, fucking platinum or whatever. To choose a metal. Well, it only comes in little batches of two or three. It means you got to find a fuck ton of these things. And especially if you're playing on higher difficulty and you can't teleport out, that's hard. I ended up going playing on easy and medium difficulties. Easy difficulty is more fun, but medium difficulty was a little bit more engaging. When you can't teleport out and you drop stuff upon death, that is fairly uh, good at ramping up the tension. Now for the score. The gameplay, it's not bad, but it's not perfect either. Could be smoother and maybe a little more intuitive at times. I'm going to give that a 2 out of 3. For the addiction... I think it is fairly addictive, especially if you're the crafting, exploring type. I'm not big on crafting, exploring. I'm more of progression. I like to progress fast. Now, so for the addiction, I would give it a 1.7 out of 2. The reliability, I can't give it a perfect score because of the whole universe dropping bullshit. Um, but I don't want to dig it too much for that because, I don't know, I feel like it's not that common. Maybe it is. I'll give it a 0.8 out of 1. For the atmosphere, I didn't really think they did a great job building the atmosphere. You get places like the sewers or frozen planet, and there's nothing really... I don't know, there's nothing really engaging in that. Yeah, maybe on the poison planet with the acid rain, like that was kind of good at building the atmosphere because it established like a tense you know, condition. You can't go above above ground when it's raining acid because it's going to hurt you. You can't walk in the acid. It's going to hurt you. Um, but the cold, there wasn't really like, oh, I'm cold. It, your character is always fine, even if you're naked. So we're going to give the atmosphere a 1 out of 2. The replay value, I think there's a lot just because these open world games are so endless. So I would give it a 1.5 out of 2. You can definitely replay it, although you might, be not, you might not be replaying it for the story. That means our total score is a 7 out of 10. It's not bad, but it's not the best. I say if you can get it cheap, why not pick it up? Uh, share it with some friends and have a good time for a while. It's a good party game. Better to play with a, with a team than it is to play alone. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe and play on.